One common critique of computer simulations is that there are just simulations. So if you want to do real science, you have to work with mathematical formula like these kind of differential equations here and not just with a bunch of code that then creates a computer simulation. To say it with the words of Josh Epstein, one of the pioneers of agent-based modeling in the social sciences, he said the often claimed distinction between computer agent models and equation-based models is illusory. Every agent model is a computer program and is such an explicit set of mathematical formulas. That's what you see here. So these codes, these are the mathematical formulas. They say what kind of behavior my little agents have, what kind of characteristics the environment has. And to say it in the words of Epstein, in practice, these formulas might be extremely complex and difficult to interpret, but they surely exist. And what you do then, you just program the behavior of the agents. And then without the need to solve a mathematical formula, you let the computer simulation run and see what happens. Uh, that means you get a numerical solution. So that's the technical term for it. A numerical solution is the outcome of just several runs of computer program, whereas solving formulas, that's usually known as an analytical solution. But both are still mathematical ways of formulating with a difference in the one you have to know, for example, in this case, differential equations. And in the other one, you just write some code and say, my agent walks like this. And if this happens, then this happens. And if this, then this. And if this, then this. Now you cannot think all of that through. So what you do is you just let it run and see what happens, but still mathematically and formal. One of the main benefits of working with code, with computer code in order to model society is the scalability, the modularity, which allows to do models in a context dependent setting. What do I mean with, with all of that? So for example, imagine you wanted to have a model about traffic. You start very easily. One of the most significant aspects of traffic is a difference in accelerating and decelerating like you can see here in this computer simulation. So, you know, for example, when you're on the freeway, you know, when that happens, you're on the freeway and there's no accident nowhere, but still all the cars stand still and you wonder where does it come from? There's no traffic light. There's no accident. Why do the cars stand still? And then they go forward in the standstill and not that's because the cars have a different, just it's tiny differences in the way they accelerate and decelerate. And then you get these wave-like forms. So let's start in modeling that. That's very important on, on the very fine-grained level. That's a very important aspect of traffic. Now, once you have this, you programmed it, you can just copy and paste this kind of code, scalability, economies of scale, and plant it into a little bit more complex model where you have a traffic grid. And then you introduce traffic lights. And now you see what happens with these traffic lights, with the acceleration, deceleration, and now you study that. Now, once you have that, you just copy and paste the code again, and you put it in a real world setting. For example, this is Chicago. And then you study how in Chicago, actually traffic, traffic patterns occur. And you can study how that works in this real world setting. But once you already de uh, develop this code, just the general code, now you can apply it to a different city and you can adjust it context dependent wise to that other city. And that's a very important benefit. For example, when I was working at the UN, one of the main critiques of our work was that we often use this one size fits all solutions. So we find something that works in one country and then we say, well, then let's transfer it to this country. It's a best practice. And people would say it's, it's, it's completely different. One size solution doesn't fit all. You have to redo your study all again. So with this kind of approach, we now have this code, the basic code, there's always some basic similarities, but we can adjust it context dependent wise. We can consider the context of a specific setting, but still benefit from this modularity approach and then study every local challenge as they happen, taking advantage of digital economies of scale.